In this tutorial, we'll make RetroArch look more like a modern front end by using dynamic backgrounds. Let's dive in. So here's what you'll need. RetroArch, obviously, and the latest version is recommended. You'll also want console playlists set up within RetroArch. I've covered these topics in a previous video, so be sure to check that out if you need help with this step. And then we'll need dynamic wallpapers. A Reddit user by the name of KDZ, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, has made their custom wallpapers available by posting them on Reddit. I'll link those below. I also have my own custom wallpapers that I've created based off those designs, and I'm sure you can find others too by searching Google. With those things out of the way, we can now start setting things up. We first want to change the menu driver by going to Settings, Drivers, and then changing the menu to XMB. Close and restart RetroArch, and then your menu will look like this. Here's a brief overview of playlist organization. RetroArch orders playlists alphanumerically from left to right as can be seen in the front end and in the playlist folder. You can reorder these playlists by simply renaming the files in the playlist folder. For instance, I like to have my playlist ordered by year of release, so I simply put the year that a console was released at the beginning of each playlist name. Here's what that looks like in RetroArch. If I wanted my playlist to be sorted by either console or handheld, and then further organized by manufacturer and then year released, I might name them something like this. Using the Game Boy playlist as an example, the H identifies that it's a handheld, the NIN identifies Nintendo as the manufacturer, and the 1989 designates the year it was released in the US. In my playlist named in this way, they would appear in this order in RetroArch. First we see the consoles, and then the handhelds, grouped by manufacturer and then year released. The reason it's important that we determine now how we want to organize our playlists in RetroArch is because we'll need to rename our custom wallpapers and icon files to match exactly the names of the playlists we've created. So getting that playlist structure organized right away will save us having to repeat work in the future. Next we'll move our dynamic background files. They need to go in the RetroArch Assets Wallpapers folder. I'm going to drag the 1080p backgrounds that I've created into this folder. As mentioned earlier, we need to rename the backgrounds to match the name of the corresponding playlist we've created. Now we can do this onesie twosie by renaming each file or we can make our lives a bit easier by using a program called Advanced Renamer. It's free for personal use, but please consider buying a license. It's a fantastic program. Let me show you how to use it to rename files. First, with Advanced Renamer open, we want to drag all of our playlist files into the Rename Files box. Then select List under Add Batch Methods and click Populate List. This will capture the file names of all of our playlists into the list box. Next, clear the rename file list by clicking list, then clear. Then drag in each of the wallpaper image files to match the order that they appear in the list box. We can resize the list window to see the full playlist file names. Then we just drag over each image file one by one. It's a good idea to quickly scan through the added files and verify the new file names correctly match. And if all looks good, we can click start batch and when we check the folder, we see the files we chose are all renamed correctly. Now here's a list of all the settings you're going to want to change in RetroArch. You can pause the video at this point to adjust your setup, but I'll also explain a few of these to hopefully make them more understandable. So this first setting tells RetroArch where to look for our dynamic wallpapers. So in this instance, I would point it to that OTG 1080p folder that I copied into the wallpapers folder. With this background image setting, you can specify a default background for RetroArch. You don't have to use this, but some background packs do contain a default image if you want to use it. The menu phone is a personal preference. You can keep it at default, but you'll get this scrolling effect on longer titles in your game select menu, which I don't like. So I choose a smaller font, and that way the text stays static. I like the retroactive icon theme, 
but feel free to choose another. You can view these by going into the Assets XMB folder of RetroArch. Each theme has its own subfolder and you can view the icons by going into the PNG folder. Whatever icon pack you choose, we'll need to revisit this folder later to rename the files to match our playlists. Placement of artwork also comes down to personal preference. These are the settings I like, but feel free to experiment to see if you like a better configuration. The settings on this page also come down to personal preference. I don't use most of these menu items, and in cases where I do need them once, I just turn them on for that one time and then turn them off again. And this way the interface stays clean, and that's the way I like it, but again, choose the options that will work best for you. I do recommend turning the menu sublabels off because I do feel like they add extra clutter, and plus the background images I designed do not look very good when they're turned on. So with all those settings saved, this is what we're looking like so far. Which you can see we're almost there, but we're still only seeing the generic system icons for our playlists, and the game names have the region and revision info still in the title, which you may not want. So let me show you how to get those things fixed. We're going to rename our icon files to match our playlists in the same way we did with our background images in Advanced Renamer. So navigate to the folder of the icon theme you chose. And just as before, I'll navigate through this folder and find each icon that corresponds to the individual playlist name and add them in the order they appear in the list. So I'll start with the TurboGrafx-16 at the top and work my way down. Then verify that everything matches up and looks good. And if all looks okay, we can start the batch. Checking our work, the system icons look good. So now let's grab the cartridge icons. The cartridge icons are named the same as the system icons, except they have the suffix of dash content, as you can see here. So just as before, let's go through and add the cartridge icons in the order that will match up with our playlist names. Now notice that our file names are in red. Advanced Renamer is warning us that we already have files with these names in our folder, and that of course is referring to our system icons, which we just renamed. Now remember that the cartridge icons have the dash content suffix, so we need to use Advanced Renamer to add that suffix to our cartridge file names. To do that, click the Add method at the bottom left, then set the index to zero and check the backwards box. Then in the add box, type in dash content. Now check the new file name previews and make sure everything matches up. And if all looks good, let's run the batch. Checking our work, we can see now that we have both system and cartridge icons. Pretty sweet. To get rid of these region and revision codes in the game titles, we can navigate to settings, playlists, manage playlists, select the playlist you want to change and then set the label display mode to remove both parents and brackets. Alternatively, you can open each playlist from the RetroArch Windows folder and set the label display mode to 3, then save the file before closing. And here's what it looks like now that we're finished. Not too bad. That will wrap it up for this video. If you found this helpful, please consider giving a like, subscribing, and all that other good stuff. Until next time, happy gaming, my friends.